well, we caught a swarm. Now what? <laughs> okay, the sun's going down. We're gonna try to get the swarm box that's up there. We gotta get it sealed up and then we have to try to get it moved. Because if you guys remember, we talked about this earlier, if you catch a swarm, you either have to move it like five miles away after you catch it for one week and then bring it back so you can place it in the hive wherever you wanna place it. If you take it down from there, you have to either have your hive right underneath the tree to move it. Otherwise, if you move it over there and you just take it down and put them in the box, you're actually going to cause them to leave again because they get confused. So it's all about distance for them. It's kind of like a GPS reset, okay? So we have this swarm up here in the box and we're going to have to close it up. And I'm actually gonna move mine to a neighbor, a friend of ours, about five miles away. I'm gonna leave them there for about a week and then we're gonna bring them back here with Dr. Leo and we're actually gonna put them in the hive so you guys will be able to see this whole thing unfold. It's gonna be pretty cool. So let's go up and check out the hive right now. really really good a lot of bees protecting their stuff everyone's coming back right now from their daily hunting and gathering but yeah they're looking pretty good Feel like they're filling it up nice protecting the entrance so we're gonna try to get this thing pulled off of here and sent over to the new location all right so I got my hood on well I almost do I'm getting my gloves on right now so apparently we got a pretty strong hive up there, a uh, swarm, because there's a lot of them still on the outside of the hive. And usually when you have them on the outside, even going into nighttime, that means you have a pretty strong swarm. So what I'm gonna have to do is climb up there and give them a little smoke, try to drive them inside the hive. What I wanna do is get everybody inside the hive so that I can close off the entrance and then we can move them. So, get my gloves on right now. my uh, handy dandy bee suit that I got when I saw daddy curbs working his mine was a little outdated and I thought man that looks like a good upgrade so I'm gonna check it out it's my new space suit <laughs> all right and the thing is, is we're kind of rush rush too because we want to show you guys how this works but it's getting darker like quick so I want to get this out of the tree and then get it over to its new home so you guys can see how this works. So I'm trying to rush. All right. So now, I like to use pine needles when I smoke for my bees. It works really good, they're free, and it seems to uh, drive them in good. So you don't wanna smoke right on them in this instance. I'm just gonna smoke around them and try to force them inside. See how they're all going inside? Now another thing too, when you're catching the swarms, once you get your box and you see the bees on it like this, you wanna put your ear up there, you know, when you get can, and make sure you hear a nice buzzing, humming sound inside there. Otherwise, you won't be getting a swarm. You'll just be getting bees checking out a box. So you wanna make sure they're actually inside. But I know this is a good, strong hive. I'm just giving you guys a tip in case you try it. So that's really getting them inside. And if we lose a couple of these uh, bees here, it'll be okay. Uh, because, you know, the queen's inside with her whole gang. So we might lose a few just because, but uh, everything will be okay. And when you, before you get up here, make sure you're prepared and you have your tape ready to go. Not like me, where I'm up here struggling right now, wasting precious time, messing with this tape. And they're really getting excited about it too.
thing is, uh, one thing's for sure, is we want to make sure we have this entrance very secure because we're going to put this thing inside of our car and drive it. <laughs> so we can't have any mistakes there. is uh, closed up. Really hear him going at it, boy. The other thing is going on is we got a big rainstorm coming in again tonight. So I wanted to make sure I got these moved out before the storm came in. The longer you leave these in here, the heavier it's going to be to get them down off of your uh, place where you caught them at. So you want to keep monitoring these ties, because right when you see them going in there, you want to move it as soon as you can. Put one more across the front, and then I think we're going to be ready to ratchet strap it up and try to get her down. thing you can do is uh, maybe stuff some newspaper in here and then put a little piece of tape over it but we don't really have any newspaper around so I'm basically just working with what I got but it's gonna work out fine no problems there's these two little pieces on the corner that I'm just kind of nervous about <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little tape right there Kind of for some guarantee, a little guarantee. And again, we're just going to move these to the new location, untape them. They'll be chilling out in there all night, and then tomorrow they'll wake up and start flying, business as usual. 
they won't even miss a beat. So reset their GPS and then they'll get back to building up this box for their winter stores. I think that's going to do it for us. down here Let's see what's going on I think what we need to do is get the other ladder. Let me see. No, I think we'll be all right. I'm gonna kind of hand it down to you, right? So let me put this on the tree. Where's that headlamp? Try to point them both over that way, so everyone can see. Stand here like this. Okay. I should be able to kind of drop it right down to you. I think I need. This. I don't think you need it because they're all in there. There's only okay. a couple stragglers up there. All right. Okay. Can you grab hold of that top strap and then? No, because I can't get my hand in it. Huh? No, I can't get my hand in it. I'm gonna have to. Do you want me to get another ladder or something? No. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I got it. A little unorthodox, I got it. but we didn't drop it. Now we're going to take this over to the car and we're going to transport it. So come on. Okay. Man, all right, so we're on our way. Go about five miles away. Luckily, we have a neighbor. That's where we actually keep our freezer. A lot of you guys ask us. What we do with our meat once we get it processed here on the homestead and we actually have a neighbor if you're new to our channel where we keep a deep freezer at their house in the barn and i do a lot of handyman stuff over there for them uh kind of helps offset the trade so to speak so we're going to head over there right now and i'll show you guys what we do once we get there it's the first time i ever had to move a hive like this a swarm um, before i'd caught one that split and then i just kind of put it in a box and it kind of worked out on that one so we're going to see how this works out and we're just taking you guys along. All right, we made it over to the neighbors. So we got a nice safe place to put them. We're basically just going to put them over here and then take this off and uh, let them hang out here for about a week.
flip my hood on just in case. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna back off. So if I gotta run. Actually going to leave half the tape on there because I want to keep this hive reduction on. I want to make sure I'm not leaving it open too much so they have to protect it, okay? So we're going to check back in on this in a little bit, but right now we're going to go back home and we'll talk some more about it. Remember that song, Oh What A Night? <laughs> All right, sorry it was a little dark. We really tried hard with the headlamps and everything to get you guys in there. And you know, it's totally raw footage. You know, I didn't do much editing on it. I cut out a little parts where I was struggling with the tape. That's all just to kind of shorten it up for you guys. I just wanted to show you like real time what it was like to actually capture a swarm because that's pretty cool. So we're gonna, we transferred that over to our neighbor's house. It's 5.6 miles away. And let me explain it to you in case you didn't understand what I was talking about before. When you catch a swarm like that, there's only two ways you can transfer them into a hive, okay? One way is that you have to put the hive right underneath the tree where you collect the swarm, all right? Now, if you do that and you wanna move them, let's say over here, what you have to do is like two to three feet increments every single day. So you put your hive underneath the tree, you put the um, swarm in the box, you leave them there, and then you wait a couple days, and then you seal them back up, and then you move them like three feet, and then you open them up, and then you leave them there for a couple days. So you're repeating that process every two or three feet until you get to your desired location. Okay, because that way it's not a big move. It doesn't disrupt them. You can't just take a hive swarm from here and be like, oh, I want to put my hives over here, have my bees, and then expect, oh, you just got cuckooed, even outside on the front porch. Uh, you can't expect to take your hive swarm and just put them in this box and then think that they're going to be fine because they're actually going to leave that box and travel back to where they had scouted out where that swarm box was, right? So you're just going to lose them, okay? Now, the other way is the way we did it is if you secure them in the box, you can actually move them about five miles, a little more, a little less, but they recommend about five miles uh, to another location. And then you open it up and you let them go out and forage and come back. And then you do that for a one week. And when you do at the end of the one week, you seal them back up and then you bring them back to your location. Again, at night, you always wanna seal your bees up at night when you catch a swarm or if you're gonna move them. You always do it at night because you have all your scouts and all your worker bees are out and you want to get everybody back home before you make the move, right? You wouldn't like it if you came home from school and your mom and dad and everybody packed up and left you standing there. <laughs> so at the end of the week, we're going to come back. Dr. Leo is actually going to come back up and we're going to show you guys how you take it out of that swarm box and you put it into the, we're going to use the horizontal hive or whatever hive that you're going to be using. So stay tuned for that video. It'll be next week, Wednesday, Thursday-ish, um, is what we're planning on. And we'll give it to you real time. We pretty much keep you guys up to date on our homestead. We post videos if, you know, what happens this day, you see it the next day. Sometimes we post on the same day it happens, but we never post two weeks or three weeks or a month later, okay? So you guys see real time updates on our homestead. So we're gonna get that, put it in the horizontal hive, show you how to section it off. And then from there, I'll be showing you guys how I maintenance them, how we pull the honey and everything else. Also, if you guys remember, we have four hives that basically didn't survive through winter. So we have a lot of honey left to extract, um, you know, for our consumption and some bee bread. So we're gonna actually do that tomorrow. My friend Greg, who you saw in this video, is a good friend of mine. He came up, helped us on the projects here on buildings, he's a good buddy. And he also wants to learn about bees. So we're kind of helping him along, getting him into it. And he actually brought up another swarm box and put it on the deer stand. Hopefully he can catch another swarm. But I will tell you this, if you, 
catch a swarm and then you bring them back and everything, you cannot have another swarm box up in that location because that might cause confusion and they'll actually return to there. And if there's a box there, they might go back in there. So he has one week to catch his swarm. And if he doesn't, we'll have to take that box out of the deer stand and then he'll have to just try it another time. And I also have a couple other locations where he can put his box and maybe he could catch a swarm as well. So as always, thanks for watching our videos. Um, super cool. Thanks for stopping by. And don't forget, we're going to be spinning the honey out. Uh, uh, you guys are going to see that video maybe Friday or maybe uh, Monday or something because uh, we don't post on the weekends now. Monday through Friday. Look for us Monday through Friday. Sometimes we put in a Sunday video and we also might do a live show here and there. But that's pretty much our schedule Monday through Friday. So just keep an eye out for those two videos coming up because they're going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully you guys are going to get a lot of great information. Okay? So as always, have a great day out there. Thanks for watching the videos. And leave a comment down below if you've ever caught a swarm. Do you have bees or do bees just totally freak you out? <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow.